Podcast, episode 474. We're going to be talking about law enforcement excessive force on motorcyclists, bikers, motorcycle club, whatever you have, we're going to be talking about it. This is going to be in the series uh, that we started actually yesterday. A uh, very good series, if you ask me. It had to do with criminal justice reform. So I figured I would throw this one in as well. Before we begin, if you want to help the show, Super Chat, baby! Give it that Super Chat going. Also, uh, Cash App at uh, dollar sign Motorcycle Madhouse. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood! It's not snowing. That's why it's damn beautiful. You guys on the East Coast are getting slammed. Now you know what I feel. And by the way, if you see uh, Jack Frost, zoom, slap that sucker for me, will you? Got some announcements for today. I was actually going to do an announcement for a motorcycle club out in Iowa that lost a brother that needs a headstone, but I cannot get the damn freaking link to pull up, so I gotta get with Big D to try to get that one again, or if he's in the chat room right now, make sure to put that link up, Big D. Anyway, press release from a bait of Iowa. Yes, a beta Iowa. We are looking at the Freedom Rally. It is going on Thursday, July 1st through Saturday, July 3rd. Gates open at 8 a.m. on the 1st. And it's located at Freedom Park, 2507 160th Avenue, Algonia. You know, I kind of had a freaking problem with a clutch cable and corn, I remember. Yes, it looks like I'd be bringing the damn boulevard with me this time. Anyway, they uh, now have the line out, uh, out for the 37th uh, rally here. Uh, you do not need to be a member or a biker to attend. Hopefully they got lots of today's. Hollywood wants to see today's. All are welcome. You do not need, again, to be a member or a biker. Uh, though by becoming a member, you save on this year's tickets even after purchasing your membership. Member includes membership in any state-supported motorcycle rights organization. Any state. Get out there and get your a bait freaking deal, man. Uh, Non-member rally tickets are $100 and include access to the festival July 1st through the 3rd, camping, all the concerts, and many other activities. Again, Hollywood wants to see titties. Titties are a must. Member tickets are 40 bucks through June 20th. Uh, become a member for only $25 at abateiowa.org. Looks like I got to be a member of them, too. You know, I'm already a member of uh, Michigan. Now I got to get um, Wisconsin. Now I got to get the Iowa one. It's pretty funny I ain't even a member of Illinois. What the hell is wrong with me? Uh, they're going to be headlined by a Grammy Award-nominated, gold-certified, hard rock group Seven Dust, Country superstar Eddie Montgomery of Montgomery Gentry and the country hip hop duel. This is my favorite, Moonshine Bandits. Yes, they're going to be there, Moonshine Bandits. Uh, additional headliner to be announced. Uh, again, the rally kicks off the first and the third day festival includes a multitude of activities, included 14 bands. Tattoo contest, bike show, rodeo, burnout pit, dino, fireworks, sled pull, duck race, vendors, and more. I do not see titties in there. Get the damn titties in there. What uh, t-shirt contest, or better yet, no t-shirt contest. Uh, again, the camping is included. You're going to go to www.abateiowafreedomrally.com. Dot com. Yes. Also, Double D over at the Motorcycle Profiling Project 
he has a new podcast out. Motorcycleprofilingproject.com. You can uh, hear and see a lot of good stuff over there, man. I'm really enjoying that. It is only $5 a month. That goes to help the cause. Come on, guys. It's not even a price of freaking Starbucks coffee to go ahead and get you uh, some support in there. Uh, actually, today we're going to be talking about an article that Double D did in 2016. Double D has been on this game, on this game for years. So if he can freaking deal with it and do his part, so can you. This Sunday on Bring It to the Table, we're going to have a representative of Duquesne Abate on. Yes, we are doing an interview seeing uh, what's going on with Abate in Illinois. Because Illinois is something else, let me tell you, something else. You know what? We pay these representatives to go to freaking legislate and they stay home. Well, typical. It happens. Anyway, how you guys doing on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all that stuff? Really uh, appreciate you guys joining the show. Don't forget to go join the Discord server, and that link is all over. <laughs> all over. Well, you know, HarleyLiberty.com, the whole nine yards. Uh, get on over there. There's video chat. Uh, pictures of titties. Yes, titties are over there. And you got the Insane Throttle Strip Club. Yes, you got some pictures of some strippers in there. <laughs> oh, man, Hollywood bury his face in that forever. Uh, anyway, one thing on the Discord server I did want to bring up, uh, because I've been getting uh, emails over on info at InsaneThrottleBikerNews.com about it. I don't care about your issues. The moderators run that site. I do not. Yes, I have it as Insane Throttle. That's just a sponsorship, okay, guys? I don't, I'm not getting into all that freaking dumb shit, okay? No freaking dumb shit for Hollywood. I got too much that I'm doing uh, to be able to deal with that kind of stuff. Go to the moderators. You got Big D, a head boss. You got bosses in there. Those are your moderators. Go to them if you have a problem. Do not come to Hollywood. Okay? Too much stuff on Hollywood's mind. Uh, anyway, let's get into the uh, news here today with Double D's and the subject of uh, excessive force. And boy, has that been an issue, hasn't it? Uh, <laughs> That has been an issue over the last year. So we're going to go over to Double D's article again, man. You guys got to, you know what, give Double D some damn uh, support, man. He's been working his butt off. But anyway, this was from a Russ Brown, a motorcycle attorneys. You got to go check out Russ Brown, man. They are a big supporter within the biker community. Uh, if you're chatting to me, I cannot see you at this point because I'm on a different screen screen my apologies but again russ brown motorcycle attorneys get on that anyway here we go excessive force and motorcyclist as you can see right there a cop uh, has a biker down on his knees a sad state of affairs i guess he did because if you look at this cop man he couldn't run a freaking half a block <laughs> Anyway, Double D for Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. This was August 16, 2016. And boy, does it resonate today, doesn't it, man? Uh, quote, without a doubt, the most controversial issue in American policing is the use of force by police officers. I say it all the time. I say it all the time. That damn badge and gun, man, it gives them Super Balls. You know what? It's probably they get upset because they actually have blue balls because their old ladies won't blow them or give them some. Uh... Oh, by the way, happy 
freaking uh, Pink Taco uh, Day today. Save the Pink Taco Day. Anyway, their old ladies ain't giving them any. So they're all upset. They're mean, man. They're just mean people. On too many occasions, we have seen newspaper headlines reporting that an individual has been brutalized or worse yet, killed by the police. You always find it funny when, you know, somebody hangs themselves in cells. Hmm. They do a Jeffrey Epstein, man. I'm telling you. Uh, the consequences of excessive and deadly force have been severe, affecting both police organizations and the communities they serve. I still say, man, get rid of the freaking uh, municipalities where they're not accountable to uh, the people. Elect sheriffs. That's what I say. Uh, like other targeted communities, use of force issues are prevalent during many incidences involving members of motorcycle clubs or others fitting the biker stereotype. Yes. As a biker, it is important to understand how the courts define excessive force and what remedies are available to victims of unreasonable force. Again, I just, you know what, I'm always going to hold that viewpoint, man. I think the old lady ain't uh, giving them any, and they got blue balls, so they angry, man. They're like my freaking pit bull, man. My pit bull right now, if you guys haven't heard. Uh, she in heat, baby. She in heat. She screwing my little Jack Russell left and right, man. Them two broads humping. You know, they wake uh, China Doll up the two hours uh, going on at it at the bed. You know, I think that's what's wrong with these cops. I think they need to go hump a pole. That's just my uh, uh, personal opinion. I think they need to go hump a pole and get rid of that anger. I, I do. Anyway, police officers in all states, and this is excessive force defined so you know, are granted authority to use force to accomplish lawful objectives. This includes arrest, entry to serve a warrant, or make an arrest and detention. This does not give them a right to choke you out or put a knee on your back of your neck. Does not give them the right. Well, an officer may use only that force which is both reasonable that means not shooting a dude 15, 16 damn times. Drop your gun. Next thing you know, there's 15 holes in you. That ain't cool, man. Uh, to affect an arrest or detention. Anything more is excessive force. <laughs> We're seeing that everywhere, aren't we? Uh, the only thing is, man, now people are getting up and, uh, you know what? They're finally understanding what clubs and bikers go through. Yes, they're finally doing it. Uh, they are measured by standards established by the Supreme Court in Graham versus Connor. You know what? That's what I love about Double D, man. He gives all the information that you need. Everything. The Graham precedent. Graham established that three-pronged test to be used by lower courts to determine a test for reasonableness and necessity that generously favors law enforcement. Even if the court gave them generous powers, they still abuse it, the schlucks. I still think that guy can't freaking run, man. It's funny seeing those cops. I think there was that one meme out there where the dude had to be like 400 pounds and a cop. And yeah, the guy sitting there, should I run? <laughs> First, what was the severity of the crime that the officer believed the suspect to have committed or to be committing? Believed, huh? Second, did the suspect present an immediate threat to the safety of police officers or the public? Third, was the suspect uh, actively resisting arrest or attempting to escape? See, the problem with uh, actively resisting arrest, you never know when you're doing it now with these coppers. 
Hell no, you don't. You might be talking to him. Next thing you know, you're in a chokehold on the ground with your your hands around your, you know. They ain't cool. You gotta start talking like men to men, man. Don't be freaking, you know, I know, again, you got blue balls. Not my problem, man. Go jerk your packer. Don't be a jerk. What I say. Uh, the calculus of reasonably, uh, reasonableness must embody allowance for the factor that the police officer are often forced to make split-second judgments in circumstances that are tense, uncertain, and rapidly evolving about the amount of force that is necessary in a particular situation. 2020 vision of hindsight does does not apply you know it's very uh interesting he brings that up you, you ever know what the uh, the cop chases uh especially in california you guys just like running man you know i gotta give it to you that's pretty cool but anyway you got them helicopters out there that follow you all over the place but they get crazy during the uh, police chase, man. They trying to roll you in uh, other traffic, trying to roll you over. Your adrenaline, I guess, gets going if you're in a situation like that. But boy, are they pissed off when they finally get you stopped, man. They like got guns drawn from 50 different directions on your butt. Yes, they do. Uh, let's see here. A nearly 30-year history of the Graham test, courts have uh, refined and applied a number of additional factors. When officers are outnumbered or confronted with particularly powerful suspects, additional force may be justified because the degree of threat posed by the suspect to officers and the public. Now, one thing that, you know, you guys, you are showing this pig. I'm going to get that. I, I'm sure I'm going to. But I don't believe, you know, women, uh, at least not by themselves, should be in a patrol car or in a fighting situation in the military. But that's just my opinion because they don't have the same physical deal as we do as men they can get overpowered god forbid getting taken advantage of I, I just don't like seeing a woman hurt i don't and i don't think they uh belong in that type of deal but anyway uh courts have said force may be excessive you guys got to get your freaking uh, deal freaking together, man. Excessive force. What's wrong with you? Uh, depending on the immediate availability of less lethal tools. So if a police officer carries a taser and chooses to shoot you with his gun instead, it may be considered unreasonable depending on the severity of the threat. An officer or agency cannot be held liable. Now, that is one thing that we talked about on these deals uh, yesterday with this criminal justice reform, and I support it 1,000%, is an officer being held liable in court where they cannot use BS to cover their butts when they screw up. No, well, thank you. Uh... The history of the suspect's mental illness or level impairment from alcohol or drugs may justify additional force. You know, that was pretty uh, prevalent in the 70s with Angel Dust, man. They were just jumping off of freaking buildings and stuff. Now, understand, now B Double D goes into understanding resisting arrest occurs when a person interferes with a law enforcement officer's attempt to perform a lawful arrest, resist and arrest is called obstruction. Every state has uh, slightly different laws which make it critical that an individual charged with a resist and arrest retain an attorney from their state. You know, that is the thing that I cannot stand is uh, different laws in different states. Um... You have to freaking get a national consensus. I know laws are at the state level, but maybe get together uh, your representatives and talk to the other people and say, okay, this is what we're going to define instead of, you know, putting our opinions out there. Uh, then he goes into the misdemeanors, and here is the court's three-prong test to determine resistance. Was the individual intentionally resisting an obstruction a law enforcement officer? And that's where my question becomes is, you know, talking shit to him, you know, 
you know, during an argument, resisting arrest, I don't know. Uh, was the individual acting violently towards a law enforcement officer? Of course, you know, you just talking, that's uh, threatening them. Uh, was the law enforcement fully uh, or lawfully discharging his duties? Was the officer properly engaged in the performance of official duties? I wonder if that applies when they get somebody in the back of their cruiser getting a Hummer. I, you know what? Is that their official capacity? You know, I've heard many, many stories around the neighborhood, you know. Uh, you know, he wants to cheat on his ex-wife, and next thing you know, they're in the back of a car. She giving him some suck suck. I, I'm just wondering, is that uh, a part of their duties? It's a, it's a question, okay? I'm not implying nothing. Uh, just asking. Uh Let's see here. A law enforcement officer can be acting lawfully even when arresting the wrong person, which they do all the time. Uh, so then we're going to go into if excessive force. Uh, you see what I mean? Double D is killing it, man. He has everything he needs in this article. I love it. I wish freaking mainstream media would follow his example. It gives all sides of the aisle, man. It, 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 you got to love it. Way to go, Biggie. Uh, recent cases involving motorcyclists and uh, excessive force have ruled using a police vehicle to ram a motorcycle is considered excessive force, you boneheads. And we all see the videos of that stuff. Even if the motorcyclist is fleeing, kicking a person off a motorcycle can be considered excessive force. Pleading guilty to a citation does not preclude an excessive force claim. And he goes into his case in uh, 2016, a federal grand jury in Oregon granted motorcyclist Justin Wilkins $500,000 because a video shows Captain Robert X uh, Edwards pursuing him in an unmarked Camaro rear-ending his motorcycle. And then pointing a gun at him and kicking him in the chest. And then uh, another one in uh, 2012, a uh, Kevin Gall uh, put his police car in the reverse and struck Brian O'Donnell's motorcycle and then ordered to end a pursuit. Uh, justifying deadly force uh, is, uh, according to the court, an officer is threatened with deadly weapons. Officer has probable cause to believe the suspect poses a threat or serious physical harm. Uh, you know what? I seen a very disturbing video. Uh, it had to be last year sometime. Where a bunch of kids were in a motel. They had airsoft rifles and stuff. Uh, somebody called the cops on them. Uh, the cops sent over a SWAT team. The kid comes out with nothing on him. He's uh, on his knees like the officer says. And he started moving forward like they told him to do. He almost fell on his face. So, you know, he puts his arms out front instead of behind his back. They open the fire on him with, uh, well, I think it was an MP4 or 5. Something like that. That was a sad state of affairs seeing that on tape. I don't know if you guys seen that one. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's, uh, options available for victims of excessive force, uh, have, uh, a viable lawsuit against the, uh, arresting officers and even the municipality. Then you, you know what? Awesome article out there. Uh, again, uh, this is on Russ Brown motorcycle attorneys, uh, website. They do got a great blog here. Let's check out some of their blog while we're, uh, here. Uh, come on, come on, load, 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 load. You know what, I hate it when these things damn go slow. Anyway, you know, you got some good stuff. Uh, on the 29th of this month, Gavin Fox blazes her own trail. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, ooh, nice pictures. Uh, then they got all kinds of other stuff on here. So go over there and check out, uh, Russ Brown, or Sickle Attorneys, and, uh, I think you'll really love it. Uh, here we go to the next one. Now, here's uh, my fault, guys. Uh, uh, Washington legislature takes up excessive force by law enforcement. 
This was posted yesterday, February 1st. Uh, now, this is by Maya. Maya, I wonder if she's a nice-looking Maya. Maya. Anyway, the issue of police accountability, and this is 2021, man. The article we just went over was from a double deal in 2016 so it's still playing out man uh the last two weeks with bills being discussed in the house of representatives and senate the gustins are continuing right now illinois with the uh reform bill uh that's just waiting for the governor's uh signature uh senate bill 5066 would it require any police officer who witnesses another officer engaging or attempting to engage in excessive force to intervene and try to stop it or risk suspension or decertification. That should be freaking common sense right there. That's what happened in Minnesota. Now look what's happening, man. You guys should have just stopped, you know, stepped in, stopped being schlucks, and helped the dude. But you didn't. And you set up the summer riots, man. You know, what the hell's wrong with you people? Get some common sense. I know you got that blue wall and stuff, but don't be pricks. That ain't right. Come on. Uh, that's a part of a broader push for police accountability in the legislator. Uh, the prime sponsor is Maca. I don't even want to try your last name, Jack, uh, of Redmond. Uh, it's inspired by uh, the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis. I already covered that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the 154. Uh, anyway, would uh, what we got here? 154, which would prohibit police tactics like chokeholds and neck restraints as well as tear gas no knock warrants and use of military gear see with the no knock warrants man that's some dangerous stuff because somebody busting down your door you don't know who it is you're gonna open fire i'm just saying man uh but anyway that is about the excessive force used by law enforcement it happens to bikers it happens to club members it happens to regular citizens, and a lot of these states are taking up the cause right now of this. And I think it's great to get that stuff. You guys can call me a leftist communist all you want, but I don't care who it comes from as long as things are fixed, man. Uh, now, a uh, sad state of affairs, man. Sad state of affairs. Harley Davidson reports quarter four loss. Misses revenue estimates, and boy, did they miss it. I don't know, man. Maybe they should have bought stock and game uh, stop, man. They had been in this bad freaking position. Uh, they came out with a quarterly loss of, oh, my God, 63 uh, cents or uh, a share versus the uh, estimate of 10 cents. Uh, this compares to earnings of 9 cents per share ago. These figures are adjusted for non-recurring items. Uh, it's a surprise negative 730%. Ooh, woo. That's a lot, okay? Mine, uh, negative 730. Uh, a quarter ago, it was expected the, the motorcycle maker would post earnings of 22 per share, when it actually produced earnings of 0.78, uh, delivering a surprise 254, but it, now it's down uh, 730, so average it out to five something right there. Uh, uh, it belongs to uh, the Zach Automotive Domestic uh, Industry uh, label, uh, but then it goes into what's next for Harley and Boy under freaking Al Bundy, the shoe salesman. Uh, your guest is as good as mine, okay? Don't know. No, this is a great one right here, baby. Uh, this is from Biker Dad. You guys got to get over there and visit his blog, man. He is one of my favorite reporters. Biker Dad, man. Chris Best. He is all over the place, and he represents 
the motorcycle is really freaking good, man. He always has them in positive lights. So make sure to go over to Biker Dad. Uh, bikers give a seven-year-old who died from cancer a huge biker send-off. You know what? That hurts my heart right there. Uh, we're watching the video right now if you're over on the radio. Uh, there's a big line on motorcycles and a funeral procession uh, taking this uh, baby. Uh, yeah, you know what? That one hurts me too much. I can't read that one. Uh, let's go to the... I'm sorry. That hurts when uh, about kids. But uh, go over to Biker Dad and check that out. DEA bus multi-state drug ring. Naughty, naughty. Ashlyn, a suspected president of the Southern White Boys Motorcycle Club, an affiliate of the Aryan Brotherhood. I think I covered this, no? Yes, I did. I think I covered this. Let's go to the wall of shame, Corey Graff. A Dallas police officer is once again behind bars charged with family violence assault. You dirty rat! The Ellis County Sheriff's officers arrested Senior Corporal Huber on January 25th. Uh, this is the second time he has been arrested for the same charge. I guess he's freaking retarded. He don't know not to get arrested for the same thing. He's stupid. Probably has an IQ of 50 or something. He like Forrest Gump, man. Look at him. He's like Forrest Gump, if you ask me. Uh, he has served on the Dallas Police Department since May of 2002 and is currently assigned to the Southwest Patrol Division. Uh, he is on administrative leave. Why would you put a guy like this on the street? See, these are the dummies that are always beating on people. What's wrong with you? Next one. Oh, a young one. Uh, Officer James Nicholson will also be placed on temporary leave because he was driving under the influence. DWI and an unlawful carry of a handgun, which is a higher offense. But you schlucks arrest us for it. Not cool. He has served with the department for three years, will be placed on temporary suspension, Pending the outcome of the criminal and administrative investigation, according to SAPD, his bond was only set for $1,500 for the DWI charge and uh, $2,000 for the unlawful carry. Bexar County records show his arraignment is on March 1st. So you get out for three hundred and fifty dollars. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for more Psycho Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. All righty, righty, righty. So what do you guys think about the uh, excessive force issue against motorcycle clubs motorcyclists everywhere and even the citizens uh again uh well before i get to that i gotta let you guys know thanks for everything that you guys do for the show i haven't been able to be in the chat room if you donated you rock on uh also don't forget to go over to our discord server uh and again the moderators are in charge get off my damn pecker Oh, my top shelf, my girl, my queen, little mama, is in the chat room. How you doing, little mama? I haven't uh, seen everybody else, but I seen that little mama pop up. But anyway, excessive force, it is actually a huge... Hey, Dewana, how you doing, my honey, my busty girl? Anyway, uh, is a huge problem in the United States. And again, I personally think it has to do with blue balls, but, you know, I may be wrong. I may be wrong, but uh, I think it's a God complex. 
or I think they don't know how to control their adrenaline. But if you look at a lot of uh, the videos on YouTube, you can actually see the cops ramming motorcycles. And that's uh, who even has a brain to even attempt that kind of stuff, really? It's like, you guys are crazy, cops. You crazy. Uh, that's all I have to say. What are you doing? You know hitting a motorcycle can kill somebody in a heartbeat. In a damn heartbeat. Get some damn common sense, man. So, anyway, double D over at the Motorcycle Profile and uh, Project.com. Get on over there. Check out his n- new podcast, Russ Brown Attorneys, man. Gotta love him. A lot of these, like Law Tigers, uh, Russ Brown, all of them, man, uh, really do great for the uh, Richard Lester. Come on. He's a legend. Uh do great for the community, man. So you guys really should support them. Uh, support all those that support you is what I say. Uh, don't forget to uh, visit us on the Hollywood and China Dow show, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. You got a little taste of uh, what we do over there, didn't you, <laughs> on yesterday's show. So with that, guys, I will talk to you later. Uh, you have a good one. If it's snowing by you, good luck showing, shoveling that snow, man. We had to do it. Now it's your turn, I have to say. Talk to you later. Goodbye. Adios, baby. Adios. Ciao. So long. Hit the hat, Jack. We'll be right back.